Before I tell you the most common mistakes made by beginners, I would like to cover the basic concept of friction that will be useful to you in solving problems. Let's say we have a heavy body such as a wooden crate or a steel elmira resting on a rough horizontal floor. The mass of the body is 100 kilograms and the coefficient of friction between the block and the floor is 0 0.5. We are interested in finding out the magnitude and direction of force of friction when we apply a force on the body like this. Initially, we apply a small force and then we apply force of larger magnitude and under each situation, we are interested in finding out the magnitude of frictional force. So, in order to determine the frictional force, we draw the free body diagram of the block showing all the forces acting on the block. The weight mg acts downwards and considering g as 9.8 meters per second square, the weight would be 980 newtons. The normal reaction is pointing upwards and this also is of 980 newtons so that it counterbalances the weight and the net force in vertical direction is zero. The applied force is F pointing to the right. When we apply a small force, say of 50 newtons, we observe that the body is at rest, it does not move. And therefore, to maintain equilibrium, there has to be a force of equal magnitude as that of F and pointing in opposite direction. We call this force as the frictional force Fr. So, when the applied force is small of 50 newtons, the frictional force is also of 50 newtons magnitude. And now, if we increase it to 100 newtons, we observe that the body is still at rest because it is pretty heavy. And with the same logic, we can say that the frictional force would also increase to 100 newtons so as to maintain equilibrium in horizontal direction. So, we tabulate this data in two columns. The first column listing the magnitude of the force that we apply and the second column listing the frictional force. So, when the applied force is 0, obviously the frictional force also is 0 and when the applied force is 50 newtons, the frictional force also is 50 newtons and so is the case when the applied force increases to 100 newtons, the frictional force also increases to 100 newtons. We keep increasing the magnitude of the applied force gradually and notice that the body does not move, it remains in equilibrium. So, the frictional force also would keep increasing counterbalancing the effect of the applied force. But this process cannot go forever. The frictional force has a limit decided by the equation fr maximum is equal to mu times n, mu is 0 0.5 and n is 980 newtons. So, this maximum frictional force works out to 490 newtons. So, when the applied force is 490 newtons, the frictional force also is 490 newtons and the body is in equilibrium, but the body is on the verge of motion. A slight increase in the applied force would cause the body to move to the right with some acceleration. So, as you see, if the applied force is 500 newtons, the frictional force has reached its limit of 490 newtons. So, it remains at 490 newtons and therefore, there is a net force on the body of 10 newtons, the difference between the applied force and the frictional force and therefore, the body would move to the right and so would be the case when the applied force increases to 600 or 1000 newtons, the frictional force would remain at 490 newtons, which we call as the limiting friction. Here is the graphical representation of the tabulated data, which shows frictional force Fr versus the applied force F. Notice that for smaller applied force between 0 and 490 newtons, the graph is increasing, but beyond 490, 
it becomes horizontal. So for the situation when the applied force is small, the frictional force adjusts its value so as to counterbalance the effect of the applied force and when the applied force is 490 newtons, the static friction is also 490 newtons, but that is the limit and the body is on the verge of motion. So this region is the equilibrium region in which the static frictional force is in play and when the applied force exceeds 490 newtons, the force of friction remains at 490 and the body sets into motion. So, whenever you solve a problem, this diagram should pop up in your head and it will help you in reminding you that the static friction is self-adjustable so as to provide equilibrium and that it reaches its maximum value when the body is on the verge of motion and when the body is in motion, the kinetic friction comes into play and its value also is nu times n. So, having talked about this basic concept, we will now talk about the common mistakes made by beginners. The common mistake is that beginners make an assumption that the frictional force can be calculated from the equation F is equal to mu times n whenever there is a friction. So, if it is a case of a static friction, then the frictional force is mu s times n and if it is a case of kinetic friction, then the frictional force magnitude is mu k times n. This is the most common mistake that beginners make. So, what is the concept to learn? You have to recognize that there is a distinction between the following three cases. The first case is when the body is at rest and the frictional force is less than its maximum value that is mu s times n and this frictional force can be calculated from equilibrium consideration and not from this formula, not from the formula F is equal to mu times n. The static friction is therefore self adjustable both in terms of its magnitude and direction in such a way that together with other forces acting on the body, it maintains a relative rest between the two surfaces. The second case is the limiting friction. The body is still at rest, but it is on the verge of moving, in which case the frictional force would reach its maximum value, which is mu s time n, and when the body slips, the kinetic friction comes into play and the force of friction is mu k times n. Whenever in a problem, if you are given a single value of coefficient friction as mu, you can treat mu s and mu k as same. So, the concept to learn is very simple. One has to make a distinction between these two important cases and that is the limiting friction comes into play only when the body is about to move, that is it is on the verge of moving, the motion is impending and the frictional force is less than mu times n when the body is in equilibrium and its value can be calculated only from equilibrium conditions. So now having seen this basic clarification, let us see how we can solve some simple problems. So here we have an interesting problem. A small block of 0 0.1 kilogram is held against a wall by application of a horizontal force of 5 newtons and the coefficient of friction between the block and the wall is 0 0.5, we are required to find the magnitude of the frictional force. Now, let us examine the forces acting on this in this block. There is a normal reaction acting on the block due to the wall. It is normal to the surface and since there is an equilibrium in the horizontal direction, this force, the normal reaction would be equal to 5 newtons. The weight W is mg 0 0.1 times 9.8. 
zero point one kg times nine point eight meters per second square. This will give you zero point nine eight newtons. So the frictional force acting upwards on the block. has to balance this downward force of 0 0.98 and therefore the frictional force would be equal to 0 0.98 newtons. It is not mu times n. So this option is the correct option. So here as you can see the frictional force is less than its maximum value because mu times n would be something like 2.5 newtons. So this is definitely less than its maximum value and we have computed the frictional force based on equilibrium considerations. Let us take up this second problem. This block of 4 kg is being pulled by a force of 20 newtons which is in horizontal direction. The block does not move and we are supposed to find the magnitude of the frictional force. Without using the equation F is equal to mu n, I can say that the frictional force acting towards the left would counterbalance the applied force of 20 newtons and therefore its magnitude would also be 20 newtons. So frictional force Fr, this force is the frictional force F sub r and we can say that F sub r is equal to 20 newtons. We don't have to calculate the frictional force using the formula F is equal to mu n. And this has been derived using just the equilibrium considerations. Now let us see what is the normal reaction. The weight acting downwards is 4 times g is 10 meters per second square. Therefore it will be 40 newtons. And since we have the equilibrium of the block in vertical direction. The normal reaction force acting on the block would also be 40 newtons. So this is the normal reaction. We know that frictional force is smaller than or equal to mu times n. Therefore mu is greater than or equal to frictional force upon n and the frictional force here in this case is 20 newtons divided by n. n is 40 which is 0 0.5. So we can conclude that coefficient of friction between the block and the table is greater than or equal to 0 0.5 and that's our answer. Let us take up another problem. This again is a simple problem where we have a block which is resting on a horizontal surface and the friction between the two surfaces that is bottom of the block and the this surface is 1 upon 2 root 3 the applied force is at an angle of 60 degrees with the horizontal. We are required to find the maximum value of the force F such that the block does not move. It is clear we are talking about a case of impending motion. The value of F would be largest when the block is on the verge of motion. So we draw the FBD of the block. The weight mg is acting downwards. The normal reaction n acting on the block is in upward direction. These are the two components of the applied force. Vertically downwards is F sin 60 and horizontally to the right is F cos 60. The frictional force is acting towards the left so as to counterbalance the applied force F cos 60. For equilibrium in the vertical direction the normal reaction n would be equal to sum of the weight mg and f sin 60 acting downwards. 
So n is equal to mg plus f sin 60. M is root 3 kg times g acceleration due to gravity plus f sin 60 is root 3 upon 2. For no motion in horizontal direction, the magnitude of this frictional force should equal the magnitude of the applied force component in horizontal direction. Therefore, the frictional force F sub r will be equal to F cos 60. For maximum F, the frictional force will also be maximum and the maximum frictional force we know is equal to mu times n. So, from these two equations, we can figure out that F cos 60 for a maximum is equal to mu times n. So, when F is maximum, F times cos 60 would be equal to mu times n which we have derived here. So, we plug in the value of n here in this equation and we simplify this expression to get F minus F upon 2 equal to G that is F is equal to 2 G and if G is 10 meters per second square, F would be equal to 20 newtons and that is our answer. So, what we notice here is when the body is about to move that is it's a case of impending motion then the value of frictional force reaches its maximum value and that is mu times n and therefore f cos 60 has been equated to mu times n. So, I hope you have liked the problems that we have solved and in the later videos, we will be taking relatively more complex problems on friction. So, if you like the video, please give your thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.